This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, three local volunteer fire departments are looking to join forces. We have more on the move next. Good evening and thank you for joining us at FYI, I'm Ken Cara. The borough of McAdoo currently has two fire companies, the McAdoo Fire Company and the Keystone Fire Company. They are ready to merge and the nearby Tresco Fire Company looks like they will join them. Recently I sat down with McAdoo Fire Company Chief Bob Leshko to talk about what this means for the fire companies and the people they serve. Chief Leshko, what are the benefits that, that the merger will have for the public and also for the fire departments that are involved in the merger? Uh, the benefits to the public are they're, they're not going to see much of a change. They're still going to see fire service provided to them and ambulance service provided as they have. Uh, they pick up a phone, they make a call, we respond, we are there no matter what it takes. Um, the benefit more to them is going to be is when it comes time for us looking and doing our fundraising, uh, it'll be one organization coming at them. They'll be getting one fund drive letter in the mail. Um, but it also allows us to bring more people into the mix of doing it. All three of the companies, uh, we've pretty much talked and we none of us have really people banging on our doors, knocking them down to want to join. Um, and, and it is getting busier and busier, not only with uh, responses, with fundraising, but being able to find family time for all of us. So uh, the merger will allow us to hopefully bring some more people into the mix and then all of us are moving towards the one common goal. Even though we all have that same goal now, but in three different organizations, it'll be in one organization. And uh, we feel we can be stronger and uh, still keep providing the same, if not a higher quality of service to the public. All right, and for Joe Public, like me, who looks at this and might say, okay, well, we just got to combine the trucks, you know, maybe bring the houses together. There's a little bit more to that going on behind doors. Without going into everything, it's a complex issue. There's a lot of stuff that has to go on behind the scenes. Uh, we need to take an inventory of what we all have because we're not going to keep duplicates, triplicates. We want to sell those items off. That's what will help us bring some funds in. So we really want to, we got to look at a lot of different things in the back, and we have to move forward as far as insurance, uh, courts, all that kind of stuff federal regulations state regulations there's a lot of stuff we need to look wow, into uh, and where does it stand right now you're still having meetings still in the planning phases of this right now uh, McAdoo and Keystone fire companies have committed hundred percent into going in with this uh, the Tresco fire company uh, their majority voted that they will be putting in their building where their fire apparatus is now their fire apparatus and their equipment they will be keeping their hall and their uh, canteen area and uh, moving off into a separate organization all right, and now once all this happens, you said it will merge into the McAdoo Fire Company, then there will be a name change. Just talk about why you're moving in that direction. Uh, there's some legal reasons. Uh, McAdoo Fire Company, we have a Medicare license with our ambulance, and we also have a 501c3. So the complexity of re-getting those after you've given one away is much more difficult and, and costly. So in the avenue of cost savings and time, we will merge into the McAdoo Fire Company and then immediately uh, change our name to a new organization name right after that is completed. All right, so a lot going on and we will keep you updated right here on FYI. The merger committee explained the status last night at both the Klein Township and Banks Township Supervisors meetings. At the request of a resident, the committee will hold a special meeting next Monday at 6 p.m. at the Tresco Firehouse to explain the merger proposal. For the 19th consecutive year, Lehigh Valley Hospital has been ranked as one of the nation's top hospitals. That's according to the 2014-2015 U.S. News & World Report's Best Hospitals list. The list names Lehigh Valley Hospital among the nation's top 3% of leading hospitals in 10 categories. Lehigh Valley Hospital is the only hospital in the region nationally ranked. Included in the recognition, Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton is listed as the high performer in pulmonology. A man who was the lead plaintiff in the case known as Lozano v. The City of Hazleton, the lawsuit filed against Hazleton's Illegal Immigration Relief Act, is headed to prison for downloading child pornography, and this is not the first time. 64-year-old Pedro Lozano is listed in court documents as Pedro Pablo Lozano Gomez. He was sentenced Monday to 4 to 23 months in Luzerne County Prison. The sentence is concurrent with another sentence he is serving. Lozano was a lead plaintiff in the case that challenged the constitutionality of Hazleton's illegal immigration law. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit in Philadelphia ruled that the law was unconstitutional. 
Testimony continues today in the so-called Ghost Rider scandal. A preliminary hearing began yesterday in the case involving two officials from the Luzerne County Transportation Authority, LCTA Executive Director Stanley Strelish and Operations Manager Rob Henderson were charged last month with conspiring to inflate senior citizen ridership numbers. The two are free on unsecured bond and remain suspended without pay. A Hazel Township man has been sentenced to 27 to 60 months in a state prison for his role in a 4th of July assault. 51-year-old David H. Klein will also have three years of probation after his sentence. The incident happened last year and started when Klein went to his neighbor's home to complain about their fireworks. Klein says he brought a baseball bat with him for protection and kicked over fireworks, and that's when he was charged at. And he says he swung the bat but didn't know if he hit anyone before he was tackled, punched, and kicked. When Witnesses say he struck someone first and then fireworks and that's when he got tackled. A victim was left unconscious and suffered an ear injury as well. A frightening situation last night in the borough of Frackville. Just before 5 p.m., firefighters were called to the area of 3rd and Arch Streets in Frackville after a child was swept into a storm drain by swift running water. Crews were already in the area for a pump detail when they got the call. The 12-year-old girl was located and pulled out in the area of Chestnut and New Streets in about 15 minutes and transported to an area hospital. Well, you're invited to a great day of golf and a chance to win a new car. The 47th Annual Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce Golf Outing and Encourse Business Exhibi Exposition will be held Thursday, August 14th at Blue Ridge Trail Golf Course in Mountaintop. Registration includes 18 holes of golf, a cart, and refreshments. For some registrations are limited and are first come, first serve. Burger Family dealerships will again sponsor a hole-in-one contest. The first player to make a hole-in-one in the designated hole will win a two-year lease on a brand new 2014 Chrysler 200. The Encourse Business Expo will feature chamber business members who are invited to set up near each tee with samples, info and more. For more information on this event, contact Leanne Falabelle at 570-455-1509. Tonight we have information from the desk of the Mayor of Freeland. Freeland Borough Council will hold a continued meeting for the purpose of borough insurance at 6 p.m. and that meeting will take place at Thursday at the Ambulance Building at 417 Johnson Street. Well here's a little preview of what's to come on FYI in sports. It's Dave Day a day early and we'll talk about the expansion of the Anthracite Football League with the Standard Speaker Sports Editor. And coming up next we visit the Firwood Music Camp in Drums. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. We're back here at the beautiful Eagle Rock Resort at The Lodge, and we are focusing our attention on adoption and foster care every Tuesday. We're also focusing on independent living, and Rye is uh, gracious enough to join us here outside to talk about his story and to hopefully enlighten any of you out there looking to adopt or foster or be a mentor to not only little kids but kids who have turned into adults right <laughs> yeah um hi out there <laughs> um yeah. so tell us your story um, tell us your background grew up everywhere up the coast the east coast um never really had a home to call home uh Right now, I live at Val Youth House, uh, working on becoming a more independent adult than uh, I should. Well, I need to be. So, um, quickly trying to uh, work on becoming a cop uh, for anywhere, to be honest. Um, wherever, I guess, fate takes me, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I have... Uh, you graduated from high school? Yeah, I graduated from high school. Uh, I started college and had to uh, move on to doing different things in order for me to stay at my uh, placement and stay into foster care instead of me uh, getting uh, removed from foster care. Mm -hmm. um, You're very goal-oriented. Where does that come from? You basically raised yourself and you said you have brothers and sisters and you were really the adult at a very young age forced to make some adult decisions for them. Um, 
To be honest, I have a whole bunch of different role models. Uh, TV is majorly one of them. Uh, all of the uh, James Bond characters were pretty much my idol. Um, if it wasn't for them, I pretty much wouldn't be the uh, guy I am today. And I applaud the uh, creator of James Bond and everything like that. So mm -hmm. Now, although you have all these goals and you're looking to be a cop, there is that missing component, and that is someone that could be around there to mentor you, correct? Correct. Um, if I were to have that, then I pretty much have everything that I need. Uh, just living life and enjoying every bit of it is what is needed for me right now. Um, if I had the role model or the parent figure, it'd be an extra blessing. All right, and you can get all the information here. Thank you again for sharing your story with us. And I know you'll be that cop that you're dreaming of Hopefully. one day soon, right? <laughs> yes. All right, thank you. We're joining us here at the beautiful Eagle Rock Resort every Tuesday as we talk about care for kids here on FYI in your community. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. All right, picture this, the leaves are falling, there's apple cider in your cup, and you just got done carving a pumpkin, and you're getting ready to attend a high school football game. Okay, I'm pushing it. Let's appreciate more of this summer, but the World Cup is over, my socks are in last place, and I'm ready for some football. By the way, we will take you to Marion Football Camp tomorrow in the SportsCast. Now, here's FYI weather from the National Weather Service. It's been feeling like summer, and tonight showers and thunderstorms are likely before 1 a.m. The low will get down to 57 degrees. Tomorrow, it's a nice day, mostly sunny. The high will be at 72. We'll get down to 53 at night. On Thursday, another sunny day with a high at 73. At night, we'll dip down to 55. On Friday, expect partly sunny skies with a high of 76. And then on Friday night, the possibility of showers and thunderstorms return. Only a 30% chance there. And then on Saturday, it goes up to 40% chance of rain. And we'll keep that 40% chance around on Saturday night with a low at 59. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat including our ice cream and yogurt or some hot food including our burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. Treat yourself today. I've been at Furwood Music Camp for about five to ten minutes now. We walked into the cafeteria, there were dueling pianos almost, and now you hear drums in the background. It's a very good time, very unique atmosphere. Here with Louis Kugelman, who is the music director for Furwood Music Camp, also a music teacher at Drums Elementary Middle School. How magical is this kind of week as a guy into music, teaching music? I mean, there's music all around right now. Where does this rank in your year, and what, what, what's so special about that you look forward to every year? Uh, for me, I look forward to this all year. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, um, but it's, uh, you know, I might be at a music store and I might be looking through some books and I might think, I'm going to buy that for Furwood. I'm going to get that. I, I want to make sure I have some fun stuff for me to play, for the kids to play. Um, just as a, as a musician myself, I, I almost never get the opportunity to be around this many uh, talented people. Uh, Mr. Littell always says, uh, in order to be successful, you know, hire as many people that are more talented uh, more intelligent than you, more everything. So, you know, I've tried my best to do that. So there are some extremely talented musicians here and uh, getting the chance to work with all of them and play with all of them and get to pick their brains about all these different instruments is just an incredible opportunity for me. I know the instructors feel the same way and uh, it's just great. You can walk around and see all these kids playing music and see them being inspired by all the talented musicians that are out here. And uh, for me, there's nothing like that. All culminates, you said, with a concert. Coming up, it'll be on Friday night. Tell us about that and how special that is to see these kids, how much they progress as they're here. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we start our concert at 6 o'clock right here in the, in the band shell. Um, all the families are here. We have a barbecue going. We have food, everything. And um, we, we start out with uh, the singing of the camp alma mater that was written by um, one of our uh, instructors here. Um, so we all get together, we sing that camp alma mater, it's you know, kind of an old school thing, but it's a lot of fun. Um, then we get right into the, uh, the recorders, do their program, uh, the string players, the guitars, the chorus, the jazz band, the concert band, the wind ensemble, last week the percussion ensemble played. Um, it's just full of music, it's, uh, it's like two, two and a half hours just of, of music that all these kids are performing and playing. Let's talk with two people Lewis brought into music at the Drums Elementary Middle School. We have Bridget here and Luke. You guys play the saxophone. How cool is this camp? Describe the, what do you do in a day here? Tell me about the camp. Well, you learn 
everything there is to know. And is it all music all the time, or do you do it? Tell me some of the other stuff you do. Well, we play a bunch of games. We go on hikes. We go to the pool. We do slip and slides. And do the saxophone, do you guys interact with, like, the percussion? I mean, how, how does that all work out? Everyone friends here? What's that like? Yeah, everybody pretty much connects here. We're all family. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, do you get experience on any other instruments, or do you do, or is it all saxophone all the time? It's all saxophone all the time, but, like, sometimes I'll try out, like, the drums a bit. If somebody has, like, a snare drum, I'll try it out. Is it cool being around so many other musicians for an entire week? Yeah, it, it's very cool because some of these people are really top-notch and it's nice to be around them and to talk to them and to learn from them and get experience with them. What's the main thing you've learned from coming here two years? How has it helped you play the saxophone? Um, well, I'm not sure. Like, just like, more some, experience? yeah, yeah, like some of the notes, like, I just be getting more experience with the notes and I know how many beats to hold them and it's a lot easier now since I was here last year to play. Guys, thank you so much. Come out see these two perform on Friday night as well here at Furwood Music Camp. We're all a family here at SSP TV as well. Well done, Bridget, there. Good interview. In tonight's community calendar, what better way to spend a summer night than at a car show? The Hazel Park Car Club will hold a car cruise tomorrow from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. The Sonic Drive-In in Humboldt will get some tots. Classic, antique, hot rods, and motorcycles are welcome. Come out for a nice evening and see some great cars. I hope some of these numbers are great for you. It's the midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers, the daily 188, the big four, 1410, Quinto 79637, and Treasure Hunt 14, 18, 20, 27, and 28. Sports is coming up when we come right back on FYI. This is FYI News 13 Sports. Happy Surprise Dave Day on the Sportscast. It's a day early. Usually we do Wednesday, but we're flexible here. Dave Seaman joins us from the Standard Speaker, the sports editor there. And we're talking about conference expansion at the high school level with the Anthracite Football League. This year they will be adding Blue Mountain and Lee Heighton to that football conference. And earlier in the day we spoke with Marion head football coach Stan DeCosti, who had this to say about expansion. It's a value-added situation. The teams we're bringing in are bringing value to our league and I think as a member, one of the original members of the league, uh, you're really excited about the fact that programs of that caliber believe it's a worthwhile league. You know, they want to join our league. You know, they, they're coming to us and saying, uh, could you get us in? And, and that tells you that we're the caliber of football, the fan interest, the facilities are all first class and, and some really, really nice programs now are going to be coming in the next couple of years because of that. And who are the two who are definitely moving in this year? Yeah, Blue Mountain and Lehigh are coming in this year and then uh, we're going to wait and see with Pottsville and and Berwick, that looks like it's a, a strong happening, and uh, and then we'll see from there. There's some other people talking too, but uh, uh, probably see a small school, big school division coming up in two years, and that's all kind of working itself out now. So a lot there, Dave, but let's start with just why you think the Anthracite Football League is so attractive, why schools would want to get into it. Is it just um, geographically because where these schools are located? What, what do you think about the expansion of the league? Well, that's part of it, but I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, tradition of the Coal Region football People know it's a competitive league. People may have played these opponents in the past, and it, it, it's something that I think the, the region wants. They want to see teams play, a, a Pottsville play in North Schuylkill every year, or uh, uh, Mono Area play Marion every year, which is happening in the Anthracite League. But now to have that kind of league where everything is organized, uh, it's just a benefit for all the football fans in the area and the, the, all the programs in general. And talk about facilities being impressive in that Marion just had an overall add down at their complex. Looks very, very impressive. Eventually breaking up, talking about Pottsville coming into the league in 2016, they'll eventually break up into a small school league and a big school league. Now I'm thinking of traditional schools like the Monoway area is one of the original. They'll go down, I guess, to that small school with the A schools, AAA and AA we read will probably be in the big school. You said you had some just concerns about maybe some of that with some of the schools on the fringe, really. Yeah, really. The schools like Panther Valley, my concern would be, and I'm sure Panther Valley's concern would be, playing against the bigger schools on a year-in-year -year basis. Their, their, their enrollment isn't going to go much further, but is it a big school or is it a small school? Sure, P Panther Valley would love to keep playing Marion and Monoy area, but there may be some years where the enrollment tips one or two persons higher and they have to play Pottsville every year. So how fair is that to Panther Valley or a Jim Thorpe, for example? That's hard to say. 
And then there was a story in the Standard Speaker a while back about the possibility of Berwick moving on to this conference, about maybe talks happening, just, just initial talks. Tukosti hitting on that a little bit as well. If the Bulldogs, a traditional powerhouse, that'd be a big get for the Anthracite League. And can you imagine Berwick playing Anthracite League football? Oh, I mean, well, Berwick was always in the same division with the Hazeltons, the Mount Carmel, Pottsville, Shikolemi. It was always a rivalry game. To have a Berwick Pottsville game every year, for example, would be, again, a treat for the fans of the area. North Schuylkill would have to bump up and play Berwick too, uh, and I'm sure that could be developing into a good rivalry too. Is this just this case right here with the co-region sports? I mean, you see it so much in college football now with conference expansion. I mean, probably a lot harder to do on the high school level, but you, you don't think this would be a norm eventually in high school sports? You think it's just kind of for the convenience with this conference? I, 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 I think so. I, I don't think you're going to see like Hazleton join the East Penn League, go back to the East Penn League, or I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Uh, Berwick is in a situation in the Wyoming Valley Conference where there were maybe one or two opponents where they were competitive with every year. The... You know, Hazleton has down, been down, but they're going to be back, I'm sure, under Coach Brennan. Uh, Valley West has been a great rivalry for Berwick. Coughlin has had been representative the last few years. Wyoming well, I mean, area, there's been some good teams, but uh, Berwick just might want to branch back out to where they were in the, in, the, in the beginning, in the Southern Division of the Old Eastern Conference. All right, well, there's some thoughts there on the expansion of the Anthracite Football. Again, it won't be long, Dave, before you're reading about high school football in the Standard Speaker and right here on FYI. Happy Wing Night! It's Wing Night at Bottlenecks. Get $2 off your order of wings or all-you-can-eat wings and boneless wings for only $14.95. Bottlenecks wings are voted best wings in the area year after year. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. One quick announcement. State Representative Tara Tuhill will be holding her fourth annual golf tournament on Saturday, August 30th at Sand Springs Country Club. Will be great prizes and chances to win a car from Burger Family Dealerships. Come and enjoy a fantastic day of golf, food, and entertainment. For info, call 570-788-5845. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Rose M. Scalliott, formerly of Hazleton. Memorial will be held Thursday at 10 a.m. at the St. Joseph Husband of Mary Catholic Church in Las Vegas. Valerie E. McDonald of Shenandoah. The Lukovitz Orvitzfell Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Antoinette Wandition of McAdoo. Funeral is Thursday at 11 a.m. for the Damiano Funeral Home. Friends make all Thursday from 10 to 11 a.m. Lester Harold Cook Jr., formerly of Ashland. Memorial is Wednesday at 8 p.m. from the Harding Litwin Funeral Home. Friends make all from 7 to 8 p.m. Constance M. Barron of Hazleton. Funeral is Thursday at 9.30 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends make all Wednesday from 6 to 9 p.m. Dolores Genevieve Vaccaro, formerly of Hazleton. Mass is Thursday at 10 a.m. at the St. James Catholic Church in West Virginia. The Eccles Spencer Norton Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. And Gerald L. Cohn of Doylestown. Funeral is Wednesday at 11 a.m. at the Gudis Israel Synagogue in Hazleton. The Firo Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. Valley East 11 and 12 year old All-Stars, their section six game last night was postponed until Tuesday night. Well, that is it for FYI. Now we'll see you again on Wednesday. Until then, take it easy, everyone.